You're listening to the Mobcast Network. Welcome to the Cold Movie Cantina. Woo! <laughs> this is the podcast that looks at some of our favorite movies. Pairs them with an alcoholic beverage. That's me. Introduces them to someone who has not seen them. She's not here today. And we talk about it. Woohoo! Uh, this week is a cult meeting where we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what we watched last week, which was Cats. Oh, wow. And then we're going to talk about some <laughs> other cool stuff. And then normally we would tell you what we're going to watch next week, but I ain't figured that out yet. We may figure that out in the episode. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I have been so busy. I have not thought about it. And um, Justina offered to pick. And then she made a list, and well, she made a list, and you have to understand it's a list about a person who's never seen movies, and it's just like I, I think that, that makes sense. To I, me. I really think we should do the one that I suggested that was suggested by Angelo. Oh, uh, um, uh, Galaxy Quest. Yes. See, I mean, I mean, I, I think it makes sense right now. Well, I, I'm all for doing Galaxy Quest. I don't know if I'm going to do it next. Okay. But I, like, because I'd like to, if, if Angelo would like to, I'd like to have Angelo on the show for that one. That would be awesome. That would be more, more you know, we can have Angelo for that. Well, yeah. So let's do that. Let's let's put let's because I know the movie originally. Okay, so here's what happened. What had happened was our next movie was supposed to be The Princess Bride, right? Because our contest winner Richard uh, was going to do that, but we just the timing didn't work. And he, you know, we just couldn't get our timing right on that one. Right. So we've bumped it a, a bumped it a, you know two weeks, and we're doing two weeks, and so we're we're kind of in a black hole for a movie. Right. And so we'll. Uh, but I like uh, we'll do let's do. Um, Galaxy Quest after Princess Bride. Okay. So that'll be that'll be a fun February movie. There you go. And then in March we'll have. Oh, you know what? I'll announce this too. Well, no, I won't. Because <laughs> I'm about to announce something, but it's, we've not been approved for it. So it'll be my luck. If I announce it. Yeah, like, don't announce don't, anything. We'll approved, don't so. do it. Yeah, don't sh- jinx that. No. Oh. Sh- <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Sh- so hey, just keep keep us in your patient. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your neighbor pop culture spirit guide, Scotty, and I'm joined by... Your facilitator of fun and lady of libations. Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie. I've been talking about in the other podcast, but not on air, off air. I don't know, maybe on air. I can't, I don't know. I, I do a lot of these lately. I know. <laughs> are they all running together? Oh, God, they are all running together, which is... It's a bad thing. It's um. It's I, not a bad thing. I, I I love what I do. I love like I loved it. I, I love what I do here. And uh, but I started with one show, and then I liked our show, and then the reason why I made the catacombs is that there's some movies that I'm just ashamed of making you guys watch. <laughs> 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 and so like some really truly just bad stuff. But I got Drew. Who's like me? We love all of that bad stuff, right? So that made sense for us. So I've got a buddy who does that. I got a buddy who likes. I got yeah. friends who like. I mean, me. I like some bad stuff. Right, right, right. But uh, you know, I've got, you know, I love our little dynamic where we we've got, you know, I I have a a, a plethora of movie knowledge. You bring in your wonderful aspects and your and and then you got this whole like and this is the great pairing of alcohol with with this and you right. you're so creative at coming up with it and finding the right pieces and then we got justina who's not seen anything it's a great dynamic so right it, it makes it, that made sense and then Janie and i used to do a show called my star wars life and we were talking about doing it again so we started that up again mm-hmm. and then the mandalorian came out and i want to do a limited series about the mandalorian and i'm like i'm now at four shows right I'm just like i'm dying <laughs> and then so i'm combining the two star wars shows, in, shows into one after mandalorian's over right and we're going to do, similar to this, we're going to do a week of Star Wars, like a cult meeting, like a Star Wars cult meeting. Right. And then we'll do like, we're going to do a Rebels rewatch on the, the, on the opposite week. So that'll be fun. Me, G, JD, and Drew are going to do that. Oh, awesome. And I'm like, okay, that'll cut me down to three shows. And then... Well, now that Rebels is on Disney+, Plus, that, um, and th- there won't be commercials, I'm assuming? Yeah, no, there's not. Yeah. I actually want to go back and watch Rebels now, so... The, um... Since I haven't seen it, the um, so I was like, "Cool, I'm down to three shows," Mm-mm. and I'm like, well, "I can do three shows." But guess what's coming out this month? What's coming out this month? Picard. I know. I cannot wait. So oh, my talk, God, oh my God! Oh my God! Yes. I'm, I'm thinking of getting our friend Chris to come in with us on that one. 
Okay. And so, um, we'll decide. I, We'll just leave it at Chris. Right. We'll decide which persona he brings. I don't right. know which persona he will bring, but I have to ask him. So, but that's a limited series too. I think it's only 10 episodes. I'm very excited. So, so is so is Jamie. Jamie and I are just, and then they have the show that it's afterwards that Will Wheaton yeah, will be, Will, Will, Wheaton. Will be hosting. And I'm kind of excited so about that as well. So my plan for Picard is, I haven't titled it yet, because theirs is uh, Breaking the Bridge. What is it? I'd have something, to look it up again. Something. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. They just cool. announced it today, so. Hold on, I'm looking it up. It's and on my Twitter. Yeah, anyway, well, while she's looking that up, um, we haven't titled it yet, but we'll we'll probably wait into episode three before we start ours, to let to get all the Easter eggs and stuff. Similar to what we did with Mando- Mandalorian, we waited about four episodes in before we started the Mando Mondays. Oh, the ready room. The ready room. That's right. I knew it was something about a part of the ship. <laughs> Yeah, so that would be really cool. And then I have been talking to another person about later in the year to doing another limited series on the stand. <gasps> oh, yes, that would be cool. Be already, you, 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 you know, know I'm a big you. Stephen King nerd. Right, so I asked our friend Dr. Ann Guzzi. <gasps> that would be awesome. I love her. She said yes. So that is awesome. So that look for that that that. I love her. Hopefully all the schedules and stuff work out. And the plan for that one is we're going to do the f- the four-part miniseries and do one ep- part of an episode and then tackle the new one. So right. So we get encompassed. I just got the audiobook, so I'm, I'm going to start listening to the audiobook so I can be really super prepared for it. Cool. Because I love I, I just went back last week and watched, rewatched The Stand. I did an episode a night. So when are, we, when are we starting that? Whenever the stand comes out, the stand's supposed to be out later this year. Okay, so, so we, is, yeah. I got time because yeah. I'm, I'm going to read read it, yeah. re re read yeah, it. I ain't got time. Does that make sense? Right, I ain't got time for that nonsense. You I need know. I need someone to read it to me while I'm in the car. <laughs> Once you re read it, so uh, that will be later. I'm hoping during Picard we'll get a trailer. Yeah, they, they're finished. They're wrapped with production on that. Well, it, isn't it Picard coming out like in in a week or two? Yeah, it's like two weeks. Yeah, but. Hopefully before the end of Picard, there'll be a stand trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because showing like, what's next kind of thing. So on CBS All Access because it's the same network. So I know. So I'm excited. Me too. So what have you watched lately? Um, Like on TV? Or movies? Well, mo- um, so let's see. Or TV. What do you watch on TV lately? <laughs> <laughs> right now, I, um, uh, Jamie and I are rewatching Deep Space Nine for like the fourth time because how far are you into it? We are fourth season. Good. So yeah, we've pitched, we've already passed your favorite episode and all. Yeah. So um, so that's kind of been our uh, let's watch this together thing. Oh, that's cute. And um, I have. I mean, you know, I'm a big Vikings fan and, you know, I'm watching the current season, but I've decided to go back and start that over. So that's my what I'm watching on my own without my husband. Um, I finished the new um, um, the newest whatever season of The Magicians. I just finished that. I just watched the new Dracula that's on Netflix. How's Dracula? It is amazing. Right. It's it's I it's, it's really it. cool. I gotta watch it. It's Josh really cool. Watching it, friends at work are watching it, and I've, I've heard more positive than negatives. The negatives are not too negative. They're just like it's a little weird, a little different. It I, is. It like is. The negatives I, ha- I am hearing are from like diehard Dracula fans, though. It's like it strays too much, and I'm like, well, I, I'm like, I think they do that on purpose. Right, I right. mean, it starts off, and and without giving any spoilers, it starts off pretty much just like the novel, <clears throat> and then all of a sudden it doesn't. But it's it's cool. I like what right. they do with it. So I, I was really down. Cool. Um, so those are my TV kind of things. Yes, I finished The Witcher. I haven't watched that yet either. Um, that was really good. Pay attention. You have to pay attention. I hear it's kind of crazy. So yeah, don't don't try to multitask. The reason why, because I, I haven't watched it, because I got obsessed by Letter Kitty, and I watched eight seasons, and I yeah. watched, watched all of it. That's on my list, and I really want to watch it, and I don't. I <laughs> hold on, hold on. But before you watch it, I have something else for you to watch if you've not seen it okay. yet. Okay. You have to watch What We Do in Shadows. What We Do in Shadows? You know, or What We Do in the Shadows. I've never even heard of it's it. It's on Hulu. Okay. It's a movie first. If you've not seen the movie, the movie's great. I've never heard of it. The movie is uh, by uh, Taika Waititi. 
Okay, bless and, you. And it's uh, you know Taika <laughs> who did who directed Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit. Okay, and, yeah. And so Taika, and uh, so he he made a movie about vampires. Oh. And it's uh it's like a va- vampire reality series, and so these it's a like film crew filming vampires and these vampire roommates in their house. Oh, that's so cool! And it's hilarious. Okay. It is Die Hard fun. What's it called again? What We Do in the Shadows. What We Do in the Shadows. So that's the movie. It's a, okay, that's the movie. I don't think the movie's on Hulu. I think it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime. But I think it's, I, think it's, I can get it. I think it's streamable. I don't think it's like mm-hmm. free streamable. If you have a service, I think it's available. Right. It may actually be on Hulu um, because they have the series. So the, the, the series takes place, it's the same premise, but it's a different set of vampires in there in Staten Island. Right. I have laughed my ass off. Just, it is the funniest damn thing. Okay, I got to see it. Um, uh the guy who played um, Abe Sapien and... Oh, uh, I love him. I cannot think of his name right uh, now. Yeah. I, uh, um, anyway. I know he, you're talking about. He's great. He's got a part in it, too, for a little while. And yeah, he's, he's on Discovery. Yeah, he's on Discovery, too. But he, and you, can t- you can tell because you know, it's all lanky and stuff. Yeah. When he, he, he plays like this really ancient like leader vampire. Like a Nosferatu yeah, looking. Very Nosferatu-like. And it's like... It's like... <laughs> the, the show is like a bunch of Ventru or Toridor hanging out. And I like... And in, in, like in this one, this house that they rent or they they own, so they the roommates. So there's three of them. There's three traditional vampires, and then there's one psychic, like a yeah, he's a he's a psychic vampire. And he's okay. Like, he's like, uh, but he's like a dude. He's just like a normal dude. Yeah. Who just bores people to death and sucks their psyche. It's oh the God. funniest damn thing. I am, I am tickled. I I've got I, to I, see I'm that. Like six then. episodes in, and I have just laughed and laughed and laughed. And All right. That's what I did this weekend. I watched that. I watched. I watched Good Boys. Okay. Good Boys is kind of like um, it's about sixth graders, and they skip school for one day, and it's their their little adventure skipping school, and it's vulgar and fun and just just like it talks. They talk like how sixth graders talk and how we talk when we were kids. Oh and, yeah. And they're just uh, they're discovering things about like their own bodies and sex, and they don't under- and they everything is wrong. And oh it's god. Just hilarious and um. I, it's a cute movie. I enjoyed it. I watched that. I watched The Kitchen. The Kitchen. It's got um, Tiffany Haddish and um, oh, what's her name? It's, a, it's got the girl from uh, Handmaid's Tale. Hand, Handmaid's Tale. Okay. And uh, Melissa McCarthy's in it as well. And it's based on a DC comic book and it was rated R. So it was technically the first rated R DC movie because it beat like Joker by four weeks or whatever. And um, it's about these these women are it's in the seventies and their husbands are part of the Irish mob and they go to jail and so they take o- over their collections and racketeering uh-huh. and try to make the neighborhood better but you know they're criminals are doing it with crime. That sounds good. It's it's like half good. like like the first forty five minutes of the movie or first hour is really good uh-huh. and then the last part's just like unbelievable it's like i don't like it's like like cats i but you know 20 minutes into cats i was comfortable i was whatever they show me i'm like okay this is what happens in this world right the opposite opposite happens in kitchen because they build this world it's like it then suddenly starts collapsing like, oh it's okay like, i don't get it and then i tried to watch um scary stories to tell in the dark yeah which i loved as a kid it's one of my favorite you know she used to scare the hell out of me those right books, those books well, like elementary school used to scare me and I know it's a kids horror film, but they screwed it all up. It's just not. It's like those 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 stories are terrifying, right? And they're just like, eh, meh, meh. meh. And had all these great visuals, and the the visuals they chose didn't translate over. So I wasn't I wasn't a fan. Uh, well, mom and I um, Saturday went to go see Knives Out. I saw that last Tuesday. Okay. Well, what do you think? I liked it. I loved it. I liked it a lot. I it was a it was fun. Oh yeah, it was real. I love the characters. Oh, Daniel Craig. Oh yeah, was great. He cracked me up. Oh yeah. I, to me, I mean, in my opinion, he made the movie. I like him and um, Michael um, Shannon. No, what's her name? I like um, him. Uh, Tony Collette. Oh yeah. Tony Collette was just amazing. Came in as. Because, you know, you've seen Tony Collette in a lot of things, but, man, she was, like, this wild character, like a really interesting shift playing this, the sister-in-law. Right, right. Oh, the kind of so hippie. Right, kinda. she was so funny. 
It was it was a funny movie. Okay. Uh, I I really really dug it. I'm glad I saw it in theaters. Um, uh, because that's yeah, that's what I saw after Cats. So Cats with you, then I went and saw Knives Out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's 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 fun. I mean, it's a good mystery that that solves itself early, and then you're like, there's still an hour left of the movie. Right. Where's this going? Exactly. And so I like where because I, mean, I was when the when when we solved it. Right. I was like, oh, what's next? And then yeah, then it, it really pick, it drops you for a little bit, but picks you right back up. So, right, and it was see, great. But see, that's what Ryan Johnson does. Ryan Johnson's really good at that. Right. Um, you ever seen Brick? I have not. Highly recommend Brick. Brick is a Ryan, one of Ryan Johnson's early films. It may be his first, but it's a it's a quote unquote modern noir film that happens in a high school. Okay. And it's got Gordon. Uh, um, Levitt. Um, Joseph Gordon. Jo- Levitt? Joseph Gordon. I haven't seen it. him in anything in a long time. He was in Knives Out. Was he? Yeah, he's on the phone. He's on a phone call. He's in every one of Ryan Johnson's movies. He was on a phone call. At yeah. what point? Uh, I, have, it's, it's, I, I have, have to go back. I have to go back and tag. I gotta look up. That's movie. crazy. He, he's also in, he's also a voice of one of the aliens in um, Last Jedi. That doesn't surprise me. But, but he's but he, the, they're buddies. But they're buddies. But the trope is he's in every one of his movies in one way. But so. But yeah, Brick is really, really good. Yeah, I right. recommend it's a murder mystery noir that happens in high school, and you're just like, it's one of my favorite things that he's that's is good. And, and um, the Brothers Bloom is really good as well. Looper's fine. I like Looper. I like Looper. But but the, his earlier stuff is really good. Then Knives Out was a just a killer film, which didn't see no Oscar love. We'll get back to that, to that later. Uh, oh yeah, lots of things to get Oscar love that I thought was going to get Oscar love. Oh. Uh. We'll talk about that in a minute, but I really, yeah, Knives Out was good. I saw 1917. Yeah, I was, <sighs> Mom and I were trying to decide what to watch, I think and. You better choice. I think you picked a better choice. Yeah. 1917 is pretty. It's real pretty. Right. And it is a, an achievement of what they did, this simulated one shot that almost happens in real time. So you go along with them on this journey, and it's, you know, horrific. Right and challenging, and it's and the it's well acted. Uh huh. It's just like, but uh, the story's very simple. It's basically it's basically Lord of the Rings. Frodo and Sam got to drop a ring in a in a mountain. Right. These two guys are going to deliver this message, and so you've got that going on. Right. And it, the the and the story can't be too complex because everything's they're everything they're they're hoping on is this this one shot. Right. This one shot continuous one shot. So the camera. There's times where the camera's to the back and, you know, while they're walking away from you and you're following them and then, then it will move to the side and move up. It's, it's, that stuff's fun to look at. It's great. Right. I, I mean, see it. But when it comes to like war films, there's, it's, it's there's better war films. There's better form war films. And I don't think the story needed that technique to sh- tell right. the story. I think the story would have been richer if they didn't do that technique. Uh huh. But I still think it's going to be the one to beat. It's and it didn't win the Golden Globes. It's going to be the one to beat. So all right. So there's that. I do need to see that. There's so much coming out too. I I know. So that's one of the I love trailers. And Mom and I, of course, are watching the trick because we're we both like trailers. We're weird, but oh, picking tra- all the movies that we're going to want to see later mm-hmm. on. So, what did you think? Catch your eye. Um, um, Gretel and Hansel look looks entertaining. Oh, I like the horror movies. I haven't so, seen that trailer. I have to check that one out. Um, it was f- trailer for Knives Out. We didn't. I didn't get that one. Okay. But I, by God, I've seen Call of the Wild like twenty times. Oh yeah. To, time. So much so, I probably won't go see. I'm going to see it anyway. But man, it's so Han Solo or Indiana Jones, whichever one you preference, has a dog. Has a CGI dog. It's a Shrek dog, and him and Shrek dog go and. In the in the snow, uh, and I don't like snow, so yeah, it doesn't look good. Go There's the another one that caught my eye, but I can't remember what it. Oh, Antebellum looks good. Antebellum looks like, like what is Jordan Peele doing now? Yeah, and I, it says from the producers of Get Out and um, us, but I'm not sure if it's Jordan Peele is that one. It doesn't say his name around it, so I haven't looked into it. But Antebellum looks scary. Yeah, I like scary stuff, so and it looked weird. So those I'm looking forward to. Did you see the one? Uh, it's got um it's about the nanny that comes to the 
house to, to, to babysit the two children whose like parents have died in this old mansion. Uh, I saw that today. What was I watching? I can't remember what the, movie, the name is. I can't remember what it was. It's uh, okay. the, the, the children, they're the it. weirds or so. I don't know. I saw it and it looks creepy with all the spiders coming out of the. It looks yeah, it looks pretty creepy. Yeah. I'm looking on IMDb because it's got the lady from um, Terminator uh, Dark Fate in it. Who was also in Halt and Catch Fire? Hey, I'm I'm gonna look up stuff with you. What was the name of that? I want to see Doolittle. Yeah, I hear the I hear it's uh, good things about it. I do want to see that. Mackenzie Davis, that's who she is. Call her Mackenzie Phillips early. That's a. Uh, Oh, Kizzy Davis is in. Oh, it looks like the color purple is going to come to the theaters. It's a uh, 35th anniversary. Oh, that's awesome. I know. I want to see that. We'll see that. Yeah, that's good. That's oh, Birds of Prey. That's another trailer. Yeah, yeah the Birds of Prey looks fun. I want to see Birds of the Prey. The Turning is the, the crazy ass. I got scary kid movies. Oh, uh, okay. Scary kid. It's like ghosts and scary children. That's like, that's a combo. There's so many I want to see that's coming, like, in the spring. It's going to be great. A lot of movies. Spring and summer. That's my favorite movie time. See, I like fall. The Oscar films come out. Yeah. I like the fun fun films. So, I know you're not a fan of the Oscars, but we're going to talk about them anyway. Let's do it. Since you did, so, I got up early to watch it. I, I, I have this weird relationship with the Oscars. I've, like, I've been watching the Oscars. And they, this is the only award show I watch. Uh-huh. I don't care about the other ones. Uh, preferably the Golden Globes, but usually I'll find out who's nominated and who's win. I don't watch it. Right. Um, because mainly because it's kind of a, 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 um, a good litmus test for the, usually a good litmus test for the um, Academy Awards. But I remember my my first Oscars like at six. Like little. Really? Yeah. And just There's something about the pageantry and me always wanting to win. Them. It, it seems like I just win one. we probably, well, I probably watched them when I was younger when we had just the three channels and you didn't have much of a choice. Right. You know, because with your parents. But I don't, as a as a rule, I don't like award shows. I, I don't know why. I can't explain it. I think it's like watching paint dry. I got gotcha. <laughs> so, And nowadays with all the technology is like, I can find out who the winners are like immediately after the show's over. Right, so right. Yeah, it's exactly. like, so we're going to do this. We're not going to go through every category. We're going to just, we're going to do, uh, we'll do, we'll do the five big ones. Okay. We'll do the actor ones. Let's do it. And then we'll do, we'll do six. We'll do the, Two the two categories for actors. We'll do the director. We'll do best picture. How about Are that? we gonna like um, pick well, our favorites sure, for we'll each pick category? Our, Let's we'll pick, pick our pick who we think we're gonna win. So would you do want to do uh, performance by a? We'll just do, we'll do it this way. Performance by an actress in a supporting role. Our nominees are Kathy Bates in Richard Jewell, Laura Dern in A Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson in Jojo Rabbit. Florence Pugh in Little Women and Margot Robbie in Bombshell. I have literally not seen any of those movies. Of I've seen Richard Jewell and Kathy Bates is amazing in it. So I see why she got the nominations. I I really want to see Jojo Rabbit. I missed it. I There's some good actresses in there. Um, uh, A Bombshell I want to see too. I don't, yeah, Kathy Bates has an Oscar, doesn't she? She does for Misery. That's what I'm saying. She's got one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say Margot Robbie. She's gonna be my pick. I'm gonna go with Scarlett Johansson and Jojo Rabbit on this one. Okay. So um, we should write these now. We should. We should remember this. But we're not. We're okay. <laughs> so listeners, cultists, please remember our picks for hey, us. Somebody write this down. And, yeah. Yeah. Message me with this. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> so okay, I've got I'll, Margot I'll Robbie. Listeners to work right. Right. So. Uh, Performance by an actress in a leading role. Okay. Uh, Cynthia Arvio in Harriet. Scarlett Johansson in Marriage Story. Shorsha Ronan in Little Women. Sharice Theron in Bombshell. And your favorite and your pick. Right. Renee Zellweger in Judy. Yes, she is totally my pick. My pick, too. I think I think she'll win for Judy. Um, uh, if not, my good close second will be, uh, oh, let's say, Sharice Theron in Bombshell. <laughs> All right. 
I have nothing to base that on. I know, it's like, doesn't she already have an Oscar as well? She, yeah, she won for, for Monster. Monster. She won for Monster. So she doesn't need another one. Right. I, <laughs> I think Scarlett Johansson is going to win hers this year. She's she's nominated in two categories. This right. Year. And But I think she has a better chance in supporting actors than I do in lead role. Okay. But I have been wrong lots of times. Performance by an actor in a supporting role. Our nominees are Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Anthony Hopkins is in The Two Popes. Al Pacino in The Irishman. Joe Pesci in The Irishman. And Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Hmm. I haven't seen The Irishman. Um, yeah, it's long. That's why I haven't seen it. Feel, watching the parts, it may be better. Or oh, that's kind of hard. Who was the? What was the first one? Uh, Tom Hanks in it at the a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is a. I I want to see that. I hear too. I hear he's really good. I want to go with Brad Pitt because he's pretty. <laughs> so. But I don't know if that performance was Oscar worthy. I I love the movie. God knows I love Tarantino movies, right. but I just. I mean, he did great. I, I don't know if I would call that an Oscar film. So here's the thing. Yeah. My pick is Brad Pitt. Okay. He won the Golden Globe for it. Uh, he was really good in it. He was great. But look at this list. Hanks has two Oscars. Yeah. Hopkins has an Oscar. Al Pacino has an Oscar. Pesci has an Oscar. Pitt doesn't have one. Okay. And so Brad Pitt has a... Sometimes the Oscars does this. It may not be your best performance or your best film, but they look at overall. They, they you know, because it's voted on people. Human beings vote on this, and it's hard to be. Sorry, human beings are. It's hard for us to be objective, right? And so sometimes we, while we're not supposed to look at a body of work, we look at a body of work, right? Um, you know, you know, like Leo DiCaprio, who been nominated like a million times, finally got his for The Revenant, which is not his best role, but right. You know, compared to everyone else, it was like that well, movie was like watching paint dry. Right, you know, I get it, but I don't get it. Kind of okay. Thing, so. All right. Well, I'm going to go for Brad Pitt. I'm going for Brad, and, and if not, it's a real shame. My second pick would be Tom Hanks, but um, I, I've seen, out of these, I've actually seen, I've seen the movies, except I didn't see A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Um, and the Hopkins is good in The Two Popes. I didn't think that movie is, cr- is as good as everyone thinks it is. Right. Um, I mean, he just plays um, Benedict, and it, and showing how out of touch Benedict was and right and just how old he was he's just old and so <laughs> it's not a bad movie it's just like yeah it's on Netflix you want to watch it so it's um the Irishman is, is long Pacino's really really good as Jimmy Hoffa Joe Pesci is good at not being Joe Pesci and that's what he's being nominated for he's being nominated for not being Joe Pesci there you go so performers by an actor in a leading role our nominees are Antonio Banderas and Pain and Glory, which is a foreign film. Speaking of Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver in A Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix is the in Joker. And Jonathan Price as in The Two Popes. I'm going with Joaquin Phoenix. I don't want to, but I think he's going to win. I think he was really good. The more I think about that movie, the more I dislike it. Oh, I loved it. Everyone does. and I just The more I think about it, the less I... He's good in it, but he, he he's like like Christian Bale good in like in the Machinist. And he was great in the Machinist, but the big thing was that he got a little body weight and all the the, the, yeah. the other extra stuff. I what I liked about this Joker is um, it humanized him. Like uh, the other Joker movies, or any any time you see Joker, he's he, he's a villain and he's crazy. But that's it. You don't see, you know, you, right. you don't see the human side of him and why he's crazy and why, you know, right. this Joker did that. This movie did that for me. And it's like, this is, this is not a, not a guy with superpowers or, or any kind of whatever. He, he's a guy who, who's been beaten down, right? you know, and he's, yeah. So I, I liked it. Um, I think he's going to win. I really think he's going to win. I would be surprised if he doesn't win. Um, I kind of want DiCaprio to win because his performance in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is amazing. Especially that, I mean, you saw it. So the yeah. scene where he's like, when he's trying to remember his lines in his dressing room and talks about how many drinks he's had and he goes, why didn't you just stop it too? And that whole scene is fantastic. Mm-hmm. 
but since he won a couple of years ago, he won't. He won't win. Right. Uh, Jonathan Price is good as Pope Francis, and I mean, I think he's better. His, I think his performance is better, and uh, Anthony Hopkins um, as the young spry Francis, who who doesn't like. Um, he's not into the the. Um, ornate thing to be a big right. pope. I mean, you're Catholic, so you know this stuff. Right, right. Uh, I was not, I did not like Benedict as a, as a cat, not, right. not the performance. You're I'm talking about as a Catholic. Right. And there's a lot uh, of Catholics who did not yeah, like yeah, Benedict. There's, there's a big thing about how he didn't, didn't like him. There's, 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 I mean, they he's, that. yeah. The, um, spoiler alert for, for the two popes. Sure. That's okay. the thing. Um, the movie starts out in the most adorable way after Francis is elected pope. He's trying to book um, a flight and thinks he can just book a flight himself. Right. And go by himself to somewhere. But he's the Pope. He's a leader <laughs> of this. <laughs> right. And so he's trying to, like, I'm trying to book a flight. And it's very <laughs> adorable. And, like, the operator doesn't believe that. Right. Because he's, he's, he's so humble. Right. He's so humble. And Jonathan Price really, really plays that up really mm-hmm. well. It's, 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 it's a good movie. I don't, I mean, I'm not saying it's not, like. Right. It's not crazy. For the nominate, it's like the Irishman to me. It's like it's good, but is it is it that good? Right. Uh, the Irishman, I will say over and over again, is overrated. All right. Um, so what do you have now? Uh, let's do uh, director. Okay. If I can find it, I'm looking on the list. If not, I'll just go to best picture. Dun dun dun. This is what we get for not preparing, but I'm yeah. busy. La, 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 la. We're looking for the director. <laughs> oh, these cult meetings. This is how we wing things. <laughs> well, that, that's what you get at the Mopcast Network. <laughs> By the way, we are coming up on our 400th episode of the, Mouse, of the Mopcast Network. That's awesome. Yeah. We're like 390-something. I think this is 394, honestly. And so... <sighs> I feel like we need to do a big movie for that. All right. Achievement and directing for nominees uh, are The Irishman, Martin Scorsese, Joker, Todd Phillips, 1917, Sam Mendes, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino, and Parasite, Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. I feel that Tarantino deserves an Oscar. Okay, I love Tarantino. But he's though. not. He's not. He's not one for directing. He's not one for best picture. He's right. Got, his three are writing. He got Pulp Fiction. Right. Uh, Django Unchained and uh, Inglorious Bastards. He's got those. So he's he's, got, he's got three Oscars, but yeah, he hasn't got one for directing. I um. Oh, those are hard though for me to pick because it, I thought the Joker was just great. That, that goes back to me. I love the Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go. I don't know which one I want to pick. If I want to pick that or so Once at, Upon a Time so in so Hollywood. Wh- which one did you like better? That's, that's the simple question. At the end of the day, which, which one did you like better? Which one are you going to own? I don't buy movies. If you, but if you, you know. If I were going to buy them, I would have to do Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because I can. That, that Tarantino are the kind of films that I can rewatch all the time. Gotcha. So I'm going to have to go with Tarantino. So I would like. Out of this list, there are there are two films that um, I don't, no, there's there's one film I wish was on this list and it didn't make it, and, and I'll talk about all that in a little bit. But um, the uh, t- uh, on this, or at least the best picture, but on the for for directing at this list, I'm f- I'm going to go Sam Mendes for 1917 just because of the technical achievement right and that's kind of a director's bag what he comes in to, yeah to, to, to i like i, I, think I, he's I haven't seen that movie so i, think I can't he's the one to beat i would like tarantino to win um but i think he's the one to beat parasite's gonna win the foreign film one and i, I think the irishman again is gonna get sh- shut out best picture there are nine this year, because you know, the best picture. There's nine. Yeah, there's nine. Okay. Um, in the past there was five, and then in the last I don't know, five or six years, maybe a little longer, they have up the to uh, up to ten. 
Yeah. I think we have ten nominees. Okay. What are the what are so those? These are in alphabetical order. Number one, and this is the one that surprised me the most. Ford versus Ferrari. Say what? Ford versus <laughs> Ferrari. Okay. I it's haven't not, seen it. I want to see it. I do too, but I'm like, is it best picture? It's not even out yet, is it? No, it's been out. Is it? Yeah, it came out like November 15th. It's out and gone. Oh my God, it'll that quick? Back. Yeah, it'll come back because of the nomination, but we'll see it again. Okay. So Ford versus Ferrari was surprised. I mean, literally I saw that. I'm like, what the? Okay. Um, the Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, The Joker, or Joker, mm-hmm. Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. There's several of those I haven't seen. And let me ask a question. Sure. Do we really need another Little Women movie? Well, um, Greta Gerwig, who directed it, is currently hot. And she did Lady Bird and a few other things. And uh, she, Lady Bird's a good movie. movie. And um, this is her first quote-unquote big studio film. And this is what she got. <laughs> and this is what she did with it. And she should have been nominated for Best Director, but there's a thing about... No, so have you seen it? Not yet. Okay, I have. To, I haven't seen. It. I'm not a. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like those. Well, that's fine. Girly that's movies, that's but I don't know. But um, I like Greta. I'm. I'm going to say because I like Greta Ger- Gerwig. Right. But um. My train of thought was real because there was sound. I'm sorry. Squirrel. Anyway, but yeah. So, but at least a little woman got nominated. Uh, for Best Picture. It won't win, but at least it was nominated. Okay. Um, I haven't seen Marriage Story, too, but I hear it's, like, tough. I'm surprised Judy was not nominated. I'm not. It didn't really? Get, yeah, her performance is probably the best thing that was reviewed out of it. It didn't get very big. But it was so good. <laughs> um, well, neither did Rocket Man. Rocket Man did, you know, was good. Uh, I didn't see it. I, it's good. It's good. Rocket Man's good. I thought Rocket Man was better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Hmm. And so, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody was a mess, and it's, it wave one big last year. So, yeah, I think that's why Rockman didn't do anything this year because they gave all those eclods to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody last year. So they didn't want to repeat themselves, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, give me the list one more time. Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Which I hear Parasite's really, really good. Don't want to see it, but. What is Jojo Rabbit? Jojo Rabbit is the Ta- Taika Waititi's movie about Germany in the nineteen late thirties, I think, and it's about the little boy who's in the Hitler Youth who sees his imaginary friend who's Hitler. Oh, that's I do want to see that. I have seen that. It's, it's supposed to be hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna go for that one. Uh, I, th- I I think nineteen seventeen is the one to beat. I would like to see um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood win though. Okay. But I think 1970. If I think there's a point where they may split it, they may they may give like a director or something else, and then they've been right. splitting in the last few years. So, so you know, Tarantino may win something, and then 1970 may win the other. Who knows? It's a mystery. We're just guessing. Um, I would like to say I think Eddie Murphy got stubbed. So like, if you've not seen Dolomite, Dolomite is my name. It is fantastic. It's hilarious. He is amazing in it, and who brings this this part of this 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 you know this comedian who played uh, Dolomite to life in such a way that's natural, and the film is just generally fun and good. And I wanted to. I actually tried to watch it one night with Jamie, and he vetoed it. He's like, "This looks stupid. It's I don't so want to watch this." Funny. So we did so not watch that. Funny, but it's, but it's directed by the guy who did Hustle and Flow and Black Snake Moan, and he directed the remake of Footloose, which is not terrible. And so, uh, uh, and then he's also he's the guy who's now directing the sequel to Coming to America that they just wrapped up on. Oh, that looks funny. Yeah. Well, so so as you've got, so go, if you get a chance to watch it by yourself, I'll have so to. Good, but yeah. I really thought his performance was going to be like his Oscar. So I'm really sad he did. I'm also mad that the Peanut Butter Falcon is just. Uh, Shia LaBeouf didn't get nominated for that or Honey Boy. I was really hoping. I, it was a long shot, but um, but looking at who they nominated, I'm like, there was I mean, like really, really do we, yeah. do we need another Leo? I mean, Leo was good, but I don't know. <sighs> I'm not a I'm not a Leo fan. You don't like a lot of things. 
I, well, I mean, I just think he's overrated. To me, he he does this. His personality seems to be the same in every movie I've seen him in. Really? Yeah, that's why I don't I don't see him as as the character that he's playing. I I I see Leo in everything. He's different in the, at least. Let's let's just talk about the two Tar- Tarantino's he's in. I mean, um, I can't think of the. Rick, Rick, is he Rick Dalton or Brad Pitt's Rick Dalton? I think he's Rick Dalton, right? Uh, I don't know. I well, can't remember can't which. Remember he's the actor yeah, in yeah, that one. I can't remember if he, he was Rick. I think he's Rick Dalton in that. And then you've got um, uh, uh, can, uh, Candy. Yeah. The There's the guys are different. But they sound the same. It's like his voice is the same. Yeah. His tone is the same. His, I don't know. I well, just yeah, don't. Most actors are that way. <laughs> Uh, there's some that are not. But though. Handful, and those people are typically character actors. Like you know, your big time actors are, are are those familiar roles. Like I mean, Denzel built a career out of being just Denzel. I understand that, um, but I'm just saying why I don't really no, no, care because no, he plays these. The characters he plays are complete. Are so different, but yet, it all I see is Leo. Right. I just I see Leo. I just. You know, gotcha. That's a, I feel that way about Tommy Lee Jones. I like Tommy Lee Jones movies. It's, I've, yeah, but I, it's, I it's agree with Tommy you. Jones. No, and I agree. And, and it's to the extent, to the extent for with um, Denzel Washington. I like Denzel Washington films, but we're gonna get one of three Denzels. Yeah. And so you know, we're gonna get Malcolm X. Uh, we're gonna get the really angry Denzel, and we're just gonna get Denzel. So, right. And I'm okay with that. But. No, I mean, and I agree. There's you know several actors I that agree do with that. Tom but Cruise. I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan, so yeah, he's. I don't know. Short and weird. <laughs> he is short and weird. <laughs> He's very short and weird. Short and weird. Short and weird. So, the tabloids, when I was in the uh, checkout line today, I saw that Brad Pitt proposed to Jennifer Anderson, An- Aniston. <laughs> really? Well, that was tabloid. Right, I'm like... So, I don't know how true it is. That, 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 that would have been everywhere. I think that's great, though. <laughs> it is what it is. Me going my ex that's crazy i did buy my ex-wife chicken nuggets this weekend you did yep well that was very nice of I'm you a good man i'll tell you that no um we were doing the show together you know she's an artist and she she um this is her fault um she drew covers of um she did some art of baby yoda with chicken nuggets oh that's cute chicken nuggies right and it's adorable right and so and then i got thinking about the chicken nuggets like all day and i'm about you know i missed lunch and i'm like i'm gonna go get chicken nuggets Chicken nugget, chicken nuggies. I was like, I might as well go see if she wants some. <laughs> so I went and got some. Like, that was nice. Some chicken nuggets, yeah. My ex husband turned 50 on the 5th. We're all getting older. And I, like, shot him a little text and wished him happy birthday. <laughs> you know, because we're not on Facebook anymore. <laughs> um, me and my ex wife are not on Facebook. Uh, like, like we're not she, Facebook friends at all. Yeah, she, I don't think she's approved me, but she, she she's unblocked me now, so she can message me about asking me about podcast stuff. Their their podcast. Stuff. <laughs> That's nice. No, we um. So I I did. I messaged him, and wished him happy birthday, because I'm not a mean person. <laughs> you only turn fifty once. No, you know I'm, I'm cool with my ex wife, so it's, it's fine. She's I wish her nothing but one good things for her. That is nice. So, I mean, ain't nothing to be hateful about. No. I'm looking. We have cult meeting questions and I'm oh good I'm looking them up about uh, about cats I think, it, I think it's about cats our last film or general questions there might be how about do you have cats <laughs> and how many do you have I mean, how is your cat you, um, how is uh Kittler oh, Kittler Kittler is amazing better let me let me give a shout out right now to Wesson Animal Hospital and Dr. Tony Ellis. He he was amazing. Um, Kittler is my diabetic cat, and um, I really thought I was going to lose him in November because he had some other issues. Not only were we trying to get his insulin regulated, but he got, um, he couldn't poop. Let's just say it that way. He had problems pooping. And um, so... Yeah, he lost. He got real skinny. You know, it was just, it was scary. It was real scary. But now he's got a big old belly on him and he's fluffy and furry and happy and eating and pooping and doing his thing. And he's awesome. Well, that's good. Um, I, I don't even bring this up because it, it involves my cat. Um, my, um, my, 
phone screwed up on me uh-huh. and I had had to do a factory reset and typically um, I have um, mop or baby mop as one of my, my backgrounds. Right. But uh, when I did a factory reset, I didn't have that. They erased the that image. Yeah. That image of the, that, that I had downloaded. All my photos went to the cloud, which was amazing. That's good. By the way, shout out to Google. Yeah, I have. I use the cloud. So I have a, I have a Google Pixel, right? Uh huh. And um, the Pixel, um, the factory reset. I, it was a nightmare. I was trying to save some photos, and I was like, oh, this is taking too long. Long story short, I could my my phone screwed up, and I could not connect to the internet mo- via mobile. And it was like, you didn't have any data. And I was like checking my account. I was like, I got eight gigs of data. Why isn't this not reading? Right. And so I tried to troubleshoot and tried to do a bunch of things. And the long run, I had to do a factory reset. So I was dreading that. So I did the factory resets um, Saturday morning. And the phone resets and then goes, uh, then it goes, would you like to update with your backup that you made two days ago? I'm like, I made a backup two days ago? And it popped everything back. It was like. That is awesome. So I don't have my phone, my photos saved on the phone anymore, but they're in the cloud. So it like cleaned it out. So I've got like an empty hard drive. It's great. And so one of the pictures that I I, I pick, couldn't find my mop picture, so I went with something else. It's my um my my cat looking very disappointed at me. He's so cute. He looks just like my Ragnar. Right. He just, He's cute. He just, it, that look is just like I'm just done with your bullshit, guy. Like, <laughs> why are you taking my picture? Did I, you bow to him? I, no, this is before that. Um, okay. So, so I have because apparently you know he is. Slept in my room last night because first I don't know. Does he have his three names yet? I, no, that asshole, <laughs> Tigger, <laughs> douchebag the third. I don't. <laughs> they're all lovable names. I don't know. He's just right. He's just a dick. I don't know. Like and he knows it. And something about cats and their attitudes. Yeah. Well, that's Kittler. I mean, Kittler's a dick, and he's he's um he's kind of an. This is how I know he feels really. I mean, like himself because he harasses the other cats <laughs> he's the i mean out of the three he's te- technically the smallest but he's been there the longest so he's alpha cat so i got a question about this all right all right i'm not getting another cat i'm not but i was reading about like what if you do you know because I, ca- I got wondering about like tigger if his like like dogs get lonely uh-huh and they mess stuff up when they're lonely right so you, you know you know, if you can get two dogs and they kind of keep themselves company, right? Right. So I read a lot about cats, and I heard you know, like, yeah, cats could can get lonely, and you know, it's it's okay to to get another cat, another cat, but there's a process. Yeah, it is. So, do you know? Did you do this where you? Because you're yeah, you're so, and so when you well they <laughs> cats there when you have a group of cats, you ha- one of them is going to be an alpha. And so they have to establish that. So when you, unless they're litter what mates, is your alpha, the Kittler, one hundred percent. Just came in and became the alpha. Oh yeah, and um, so when you introduce, so if you have your two cats together like litter mates, you'll see a little bit of that, but not you know as much. But if you have a a cat and you bring in another cat, it takes a good week, I would say for them and you have to kind of let them handle their own shit right. you know because there will be some growling and some hissing and s- little scuffle here and there you know to kind of work out who's going to be alpha right so yeah it's a thing and kittler will i mean he's he will whip the other cats ass so, so i was reading all the kind of words that I didn't, I didn't know i don't know if you do this because you know i read everything on the internet all right, right. The grain of salt. they're like you know, separate your water and your food dishes. And I'm like, you don't have a lot of cats. You just have that stuff all over the place. And that would be crazy. I don't do that. It's like I mean, it, well, it depends on like if, if you have cats that are on different diets, well, yeah, well, which yeah. you can do that. But no, no I, I, di- I, I mean, didn't do that. I mean, I would give them all different food dishes. Don't get me wrong because I'm not a monster. But I'm not, I'm not going to have like a food trough for my cats. But I'm like. Well, it depends on how you like food. Feet like I, what we do is we um, we have a bowl that has the dry kibble that you know we keep kibble in it for them, right. but 
every morning they get their wet food. And so I have the little small dessert size paper plates right. that I keep for them. And I'll divide their wet food onto their paper plate so they have their own plate right. for that. But I have a water fountain for them to drink out of. So, you know, you get clean moving water so their water doesn't get stagnant. But they share the kibble because okay. they just kind of munch on it during the day. But in the mornings and at night, they get canned food well, that's their and they share it. So my cat, we we have we feed our cat in the morning and we have the kibble in the, the day, but and during the day for him. But he's an outside cat, so Lord knows what he eats outside. Yeah, Ragnar is our indoor outdoor yeah, cat. Yeah, same thing because right, we're, they're both orange cats. Right. Something about that orange. They got to be outside, man. And, he, and my cat, and and like you know, uh, Ticker's fixed, so so he doesn't roam. Yeah, our Ragnar doesn't. I mean, he roams the neighborhood, but he's also fixed. But he still likes to get into scuffles every once in a while oh, yeah. no, no, outside. No, Ticker shows everyone who's boss. Yeah, is. and so he came home with. Um, his, you know, he'd gotten into a scuffle, so he had some scratches on his ears. And um, I don't know what happened. One of them was starting to scab over, and I don't know what happened. He pissed Kittler off the other day, and Kittler smacked him and smacked one of the scabs off. Right. So on side of his ear, I come home, and Jamie doesn't notice it. Because Jamie's the dude. And I come home and there's all this blood running down. You know, Ragnar's here. And I'm like, what the hell? So, um, you know, then that's when I found out that they had been, you know, him and Kittler had been kind of fighting. And um, Jamie just didn't notice it. But I cleaned it up and he, he's all fine. But because of that... He's not been. He's been grounded. So, <laughs> so the past two days, he's not been allowed to go outside because I wanted to make sure it healed. So right, because right, he right. gets, he rolls in the dirt, and I, you know, yeah, I didn't want to get yeah. infected because I don't need another vet bill. But um, so yeah, he's he's pissed off yes. because he wants to be outside so my cat, bad. Okay, we'll go outside um, in the morning for a little while because I mean, yeah, we don't have a litter box because. Everything out there, that's, that's yeah, so well, yeah. Out. I mean, we wouldn't have to have one if we just had Ragnar, oh, right, but right. yeah, and so, um, but I have two litter boxes, right? <laughs> so, um, how many cats do you have? I have three, you have three. I have two very large litter boxes, and so, um, Tigger does he go, he, in the morning, we let him out because he's been inside all night, mm -hmm. so, you know, like five in the morning, he'll start howling and like all right we got you and then i'll go back to bed yeah see we're the opposite like he'll go out during the day but he knows it's like he's like a kid you have a curfew you have to come in at dark so he comes in at dark and well, sometimes, sometimes tear will say at, at night sometimes it, it, he's got this only whatever he wants to come in he'll come in yeah and he'll let you know no i don't do that he'll let you know and like we have a curfew for he's ours <laughs> he, he'll knock on the door he'll just he'll get his paw yeah he, like he's figured that out the other thing is like I have, a, I have a window air conditioning unit, uh -huh. and so it, uh, he will climb up on that and knock on the window. Because if I didn't hear him at the door, he's like, "Hey, you, uh -huh. come come get me." And I, it's really funny because you know we've had a little cold spell back in the last right, week, right. And so he don't like cold. He's no, like, I don't blame him. Come back and like, I'm in. I gotta get me in. Get me in. So I love that stupid cat. I, I do. <laughs> I love the cat. He just he annoys the hell of me. I love him to death. I love my kitties. He, um, he, this was last week. I posted a picture of this, but last week he, I think it was last weekend, he um, woke me up early. Uh huh. And I'm like, I don't have to go to work. Why are we waking up? And I was like, oh, yeah, cat, you have a bladder. Gotcha. I understand. So I set him out, and then he, like, 10 minutes later, he knocked on the window and let him in. And then I went back to, I went to go lay down, and then he just jumped in bed with me and was kind of playing, like, he wanted me. He's got a thing where he wants me to pet him, and he'll just like smack me until I do. Right. And I was like, "Wait, well, I'm sleeping. I can't do this." And so what I did was I went to YouTube, and Googled YouTube for cats. Uh huh. And it had all these images, like this video of just birds. Oh my gosh. And he watched that. I was like, I was like, I need like, to try that with my cats. It's when like I'm if I had a toddler. It's like you're gonna watch this show. Go, you're SpongeBob. You just <laughs> go back to sleep. You watch SpongeBob. And he watched. He watched, and he every now and then he would walk over to the monitor and then and, and swipe at it and just kind of. But he was fascinated. That's awesome. The other thing, I, and I think I mentioned this before on this podcast or one of the other podcasts, I love to when he annoys me uh, a lot. 
I like to go to YouTube and 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 pull up kitten sounds. Oh God, that's hilarious! And play kitten sounds. You're an asshole. And then he like freaks out and starts looking for through the house for the baby kittens. Oh my God! So yeah, I don't know what they're telling him in that language, but he's like, "There's a baby kitten here, and I, I need to, to find it. I need to find it." And I don't know if he wants to like beat it up or take care of it. I don't. <laughs> but he's on the hunt, going, "Where's a kitten?" And, I, and I've tried to, like puppy sounds and all that other. Nothing gets him where. But the kitten, kitten sounds. Kitten sounds. I mean, he's like, "Where are those kittens? I gotta find them kittens. Where them kittens at?" Uh, so we got a huge cat tree for our cats back in October. Every oh. night, this is what we oh, see. Cool. So I'm showing them a picture of like it's it's a tall one, and they're like have their own little tier that they like that they hang out on. Oh, well, that's cool. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Yeah. Every year during October, B and B Pets has what's called Cattober, and so all the cat supplies are like big sales. I love it. You're a crazy cat lady. It's awesome. I am. <laughs> it's awesome. Crazy cat lady. Oh. Did you find the questions? I did. All right. I forgot about it. I thought it in the show. And I'm like, no, I, let's do these questions real quick. They're mostly the same. All right. So, JD from My Star's Life wants to know, why would Dame Judy think this was a good idea? <laughs> I wondered that myself. There were several actors in this show, that movie, that I wondered. What, they must have been paid really well. That's right, the only right. thing I can figure. Because it... I mm. Look... Here, here's what I think about that. Uh, before anything's filmed, your agent comes to you and goes, hey, they're going to make cats. You know what I mean, cats? And it sounds like a great idea. So, like, I mean, like, before I saw, you, you asked, hey, Scott, do you want to be in cats? I'll be in cats. I'll be in cats. cats. Well, sure that's a big show. So yeah. Everybody will come watch cats. I will make a lot of, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that'll be great. Well, then, and then they make it and it doesn't work well. I, I think that's really what that is. And then you're already under contract right. to do it. Uh, yeah. Our, our friend Princess in the P back wants to know. Um, <laughs> she, uh, let's see. But do you do you think cats did much licking themselves? <laughs> do you think cats what? <laughs> do you think the cats did much, um, more licking themselves or less than normal cats? In the or, movie? Or, yeah. In the mo- or what is it? Or was it uh, because if they had thumbs they would clean themselves better? <laughs> um. I think since they had, not only did they have thumbs, they had human hands. Right. Um, Boy, did they have human hands. They could probably soap themselves up if they weren't scared of water, you know, or at least, you know, brush themselves, clean themselves that way. So I'd, I would say less licking. So I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There are two questions that are similar. Um, Ryan Gardner and our friend Kevin Laporte um, basically asked the same thing. Uh, why would anyone think that this was needed to be remade? <laughs> uh, <laughs> with a, a storyline as fine as it was, I I think that there's a there's a trend within the past few years to adapt Broadway shows to movies, um, right. which in theory I think is good because there are there's. Not everybody gets to see a Broadway fit movie. I mean, right, Broadway show right, it, because it's, it's expensive it's, and you have to travel. Yeah, and, New York, like this country's big, right. it's hard to get to. Or you, the, or the Chicago, or right. so you know somewhere. So not everybody can see that. But so this will bring these wonderful stage performances to the theaters. So in theory, I think that's why they've started doing this. And so I can see, you know, they did it with Into the Woods. They've done it with um, Les Miserables, you know, several Broadway shows. So I can see them saying, okay, we're going to do Cats. Um, What do you think the last successful one is? Because I don't think In the Woods is okay. I'm biased against In the the Woods because I don't like Sodheim. I know, right? I don't like it. I don't like Into the Woods. Right. So, but I think that I, th- I think it was um, visually. It's fine. I don't have to see. Fine. It. Um, I liked Les Misérables, but uh, there were so many people that criticized it. I enjoyed it. Right. So, it just depends. I'm not a fan of Cats. Right. Uh, Broadway. Me, me mind, but but it's, so that being said, you know, I, I think that the movies are never as good as the, as the stage show. No. 
And so th- this was just. I, I, I think the closest one we got was Chicago. I think Chicago. Oh, Chicago was fantastic. I think, I think, yeah, yeah Chicago was fantastic. So, um, uh, I Phantom, think I liked I liked Phantom. I liked the yeah. I liked Phantom. Sh- Schumacher of all people made a good Phantom. Right. Well, not, yeah. No, I like Phantom too. Yeah, I think not, Chicago not, was not, great not, though. But yeah, I can. So I think the reason why they why they thought this was a good idea is because there's been a trend to bring the Broadway shows right. to the movies, and I mean, we're they've in, been we're getting in, in the Heights, which is uh, right. Well, Miranda, that's coming. Right. So I think they, you know, they have been successful enough. And the Heights looks really. But good. this one was just terrible. It was just terrible. I mean, I hate to say it. It was just. Um, so I, I I was talking to our friend Marshall O'Hearn yesterday. Who's a yeah. listener of the podcast? And he's just I love kid. Marshall. He designed the Cold Movie Canteen logo and stuff for us. Hey, Marshall, he's, I want one of those Baby Yoda shirts that Shannon has because I'm jealous. Just in case you're listening, I wear a medium. <laughs> I'm willing to pay. <laughs> There's always that. Um, so, Marshall, when we talked about that, Cats was originally supposed to be animated, right. which made sense. I think it would have worked better so animated. He brought up something that I think is fascinating okay. about it. He said he thinks Wicked should be animated. Hmm. Wicked is owned by Universal, and, right. it's, and it's movies coming. It's right. coming. Yeah. Um, and his... his I, Reasoning made sense to me. Okay, what's... You can have the original voice actors come back and do it. Oh, yeah. Because age doesn't matter. And it's almost a 20-year-old show now. And so you can have... Um, That's right. Jimmy so Mendes they could... Kristen Chenoweth come back and... You're right. Joel Gray come back and do and, and do it. I think that would be great. And I'm like, I think it would be awesome. I think if, you know, you, you put a good animation team behind it and right. write... I mean, the music's there. It's solid. It's an easy show to do, and you know it's it's a kid friendly show, and it would make a lot of money. I think I think, I think animated would be the way to go for that. I think they're going to do, they'll probably do live action, which is not a, which is a terrible idea. But I think you know Liz, after I'm sold it, I would do his animated film. Oh so yeah, Marshall had a great idea on that. I think they so. Pay Marshall money for that. That's so good. Yeah. I think, yeah, I would see it. I would see Wicked anyway. I think it would be better than Cats. <laughs> it was. He was saying Wicked? No, I meant like it, mm-hmm. the movie no. version. Y- yes, I've seen Wicked, uh, but I'm saying, saying the Wicked movie again. version would be. God, I've seen Wicked in almost 10 years. God, let me see that again. My, my boys actually saw Wicked in Chicago. Nice. It's the only show Broadway I think they've seen. I but Hamilton was in Nashville. It's been in Nashville all month. I didn't know that at all. Oh. Uh, I, 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 st- I still haven't seen it. Yeah, it ends like this weekend. I, 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 Son I, of a right, I just, mother. I would have, I would have <laughs> snuck. I'm going to keep, I'm gonna have to keep a watch for him. Atlanta maybe next? Yeah. New Orleans. I don't think I've done Atlanta, Atlanta yet. Keep, it, keep a watch. Keep a watch. I'm going to go see it again. It's so good. It's so good. I want to see it. And so, oh, I, there's one more question. Okay. We went on that tangent. Um, uh, so uh, Thomas wants to know, what changes would we make to the movie? To Cat? Mm-hmm. Um, I if it, I mean, obviously, if 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 it had to stay live action, <laughs> <laughs> I would f- fix the CGI, which I think they did, but. I don't know. There's a lot that's just wonky about it. The I think the only way to fix it is to animate it. Really, I would and, and keep the original story. I don't. Yeah. I don't think we need uh, the hand, handholded story that we. No, got. no. Keep the original story and animate it is what I would do to fix it. And that's it. That's all the questions for the uh, for the cultist and we're about cat. They were all about cats. How funny. So um, we've figured out what movie we're doing next week. God, that's true. We haven't talked about that. Um. um I want to do something fun stupid oh. something fun and stupid oh let's let's do let's do you really raising arizona i love that movie let's do raising arizona let's do it we're gonna do raising arizona we're doing raising arizona son you got a panty on your head just drive fast eh? The first time I met Ed was in the county lockup in Tempe, Arizona. You're a flower, you are. A day I'll never forget. I do. You bet I do. Okay, then. My lawless years were behind me. Our child-rearing years lay ahead. But... (laughs) 
Biology conspired to keep us childless. You go right back up there and get me a toddler. I need a baby hide. I got more than I can handle. At the time, his little plan seemed like the solution to all our problems. And the answer to all our prayers. He's beautiful. What are you kidding? We got us a family here. I want Nathan Jr. back. What's his name? Ed Jr. Hi, Jr. So far, we've just been using Jr. We call him Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. He's out there somewhere. Hold on, Nathan. We're gonna go pick up Daddy. I'll be taking these huggies and uh, whatever cash you got. <laughs> you busted out of jail. We released Krishaz on our own recognizance. What Double here is trying to say is that we felt the institution no longer had anything to offer us. <gasps> we got a job now. Everything's changed. Yeah! Where's Junior? Ah! Who the hell are you? I'm a fan. We're absolutely going to get him back. Just ain't no question about that. Give me that baby, you warthog from hell! <laughs> hey, you want to know another thing? I'm going to be a better person from here on out. <laughs> Let's go get Nathan Junior. Raising Arizona, a comedy beyond belief. Well, it ain't Ozzy and Harriet. Why? Because I just bought a copy of Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> I was bu- I was buying like I was buying some uh, corned beef and hash, and uh, like I was craving it real bad. And we, gonna... we can talk about how um um I was in a movie with Nick Cage. You can't see. Look. I was in several movies. <laughs> see, look at there. There you go. Stephanie has a Nick Cage connection, so we'll do uh, our first Going to Brothers movie. We'll do uh, Raising Arizona. There you go. So there's that. So our next three movies are going to be Raising Arizona. The Princess Bride and uh, Galaxy Quest. We'll do a, a trio of comedies, and then I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. It's, it's, it's fun, lighthearted. We'll do a trio of comedies, and I think next we'll do a trio of horror films after that. Sounds good. All right, this is Scotty saying this is our contribution to the multiverse. Go out and make yours. Bye. That was a good show. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening to the Mobcast Network.